Let me show you my latest project. Start recording. I've been wondering for some time what would be the decent solution for how to 3D scan different spaces and environments efficiently. The possibilities of 360 cameras have inspired me a lot and I have had this project in my mind a long time through which I would finally be able to test whether my idea is possible. Using multiple 360 cameras offers a lot of coverage when we want to collect diverse image datasets from different locations. But it must be noted that the scanning process from camera images to a finished 3D model involves considerable number of steps and development phases. So even though the scanning itself could be ultimately be quite easy, the actual post-processing is even more demanding and time-consuming job. But the more you look into it, the more options you will find to improve the process. And it's actually quite exciting to see how many other parties are trying to create solution in this area at the moment. But before we start exploring how this special scanning stick works, I want to thank the Insta360 company for sponsoring this video. I'm very happy that they were willing to provide me with two of their latest X5 model cameras. And of course, the third role was written for my own Insta360 1-inch camera. But as with all exciting stories, there turn out to be some twists and turns with it. I was recently filming a 360 video for my client when this unfortunate incident happened. Ouch! A surprisingly strong wind knocked over my camera stand and the lens of the 1-inch camera broke. This was a sad setback because I had thought that I would be able to utilize this beloved camera of mine in this 3D scanning project as a one of the three angles. But since one of the camera lenses was still intact, I was eager to see if it could still be used for 3D scanning. Because when this camera is placed at the lowest angle close to the ground, we can only use half of the full 360 image anyway. So, at least in theory, it should work and 3D scanning with this new magic wand, I should be able to produce the necessary data to make a Gaussian splatting models. But before we have a working 3D models in our hands, we need to research and understand what kind of a journey is required to turn images from 360 cameras into the three-dimensional files. The starting point is that the 360 video must first be converted to the basic format from which the task can be advanced. There are only a very few specific services that can handle the native .ensv format of Insta360 cameras directly. One of these, perhaps the most interesting at the moment, is the Splatica service on the web. Splatica advertised that it can convert .ensv video files in RAW format and generate Gaussian splatting models from them. The difference is that Splatica can only handle one video file at a time, so you can't feed it material from multiple cameras. 
If you want to try it, you should do a scan with a single 360 camera, where you scan your subject from a multiple height in one shot. I don't have much information about what actually happens under the hood of Splatica. I only know that the process takes quite a long time and that they have an interesting filtering method that can remove you as the camera operator from the original image. Splatica Web Viewer is also quite interesting. It is based on the source code developed by Mark Kellogg. Gaussian models look reasonably good and run smoothly in the web browser as long as the relatively heavy loading process is completed first. This service works with credits and monthly subscription, depending on how much you want to invest in it. So, if you are looking for an easy solution and want to have your scanned material handled by an external server, Splatica is actually the only service currently that can handle 360 material directly and train it to Gaussian splatting model. But now let's get back to our original path. So our goal is to produce a 360 video in 2x1 equirectangular format before we can move on. And for that we need the Insta360 Studio program. The desktop software has been updated and developed a lot in recent months and is now a very versatile editor where you can very efficiently process 360 images and assemble various cropped videos. But for our 3D scanning purposes we only need the full equirectangular video. The only thing that is good to do before exporting is to make sure that this directional lock setting is turned on. There are now also a few controls where you can adjust the brightness and other image setting aspects. But what I think is the most useful here is this Clarity Plus setting, with which you get just right kind of sharpness and contrast into the 360 footage. And this can help later when we implement 3D tracking and alignment for the images. But otherwise, as said, we only need to use the studio program mostly just for the exporting the video in 360 format, so we can continue with our task. So now that we have these equirectangular videos, we need to figure out how we can process them. Since the images are so heavily distorted that they cannot be fitted to any 3D construction pipeline as is, we need to figure out what to do with them to make them easier for computer vision to process. Although this has been long evaded and a function that could handle equirectangular format is probably one of the most request feature, for example on the Postchart Discord channel. There is still no straightforward solution for it yet. However, there are already some cool ideas and the latest news in NVIDIA's 3D GRUD technology, where image data collected with wide-angle fisheye lenses can already be used to create Gaussian models. And it is certainly a step forward. Jonathan Stephens have made an interesting video about this topic, I'll put the link in the description. But still, in order to move forward from this stage, we need to cut and separate the 360 images into several parts. The cube map format has often been found to be solution for this problem. I have studied it quite a bit and built my own solution for it. In my previous videos I have discussed this issue, how views can be extracted manually using Insta360 Studio, or how the issue can be automated and use different kind of scripts or other programs to extract these images. But the more I have studied the issue, I have noticed that the basic six phases cube map model is perhaps not the best solution to produce right kind of image data. 
The six basic directions of the cube map are often left a little incomplete because we have to remove the camera directions that are pointing up and down. These angles are often unnecessary because they point either straight up to the sky or ceiling or perpendicular to the ground. And therefore, they do not provide any necessary information for building a 3D model. So after this, we are left with only four main directions. And these are not enough. These are too less, especially because we often have to exclude the directions where I, myself, appear in the picture as the camera operator. Therefore, it is a good idea to add cube map directions and include intermediate image angles, so that in the end we have a total of 8 images from this plane. Of course, there is a lot of more to these so-called compass directions, and their number can vary, especially when we collect them from a camera that shoots from the high angle, and likewise from a low angle. My intention is not to go into them in more depth in this video. I just want to say that there are several interesting development projects going on in this area right now, and a few interesting developers have coded various scripts and small applications that can be used to separate cube map images. For example, this developer named Ronski, I believe he is from UK, he has developed a pretty competent piece of software that you can use for image separation and also masking yourself out from the picture. You can find this 360 prep tool on the Comroad online store. But then I must also mention a fellow Finnish developer, Antti Ohaukoivu, who has bravely developed a complete system which automates this whole process with a single easy-to-use editor that controls all the needed programs such as Reality Capture and the Post Shot. And of course I must mention in this context that I myself am also developing a tool for Blender software where the idea is to create cameras in a very visual way and render only the essential angles out of the 360 video. The work with it is still very much in progress, so I will tell you more about it in the future videos. But let's finalize this process path now. When we finally have a good bunch of these extracted images, we can finally start calculating the point clouds out of them using either a local application on our own computer, or we can try to upload these images also to the web services like Polycam or Kiri Engine and see what kind of end results they will process out of them. Varjo company's teleport service has just been updated and its latest version 2 has been recently released. It looks very nice and a lot of accuracy has been added to the Gaussian training process while still taking optimization into account. Teleport seems very promising so I recommend giving it a try. So in the end this is the process path that we need to understand. I believe it gives us a lot to think about when we start scanning these things with the 360 cameras. But how did my scanning wand manage after all? Did the scanning with the broken camera work? On that part I have to honestly say no. Even though half of the camera image surface is intact, the impact on the other lens makes the image annoyingly blurry and that hazy line inevitably appears through the image even though I tried to avoid it. Now I just need to figure out a way to fix this lens. It would be easy to just replace the entire lens module, but since this camera model has been discontinued, the module is very hard to get anywhere. 
Another option would be to replace this entirely with the third X5 model camera. Otherwise, these new X5 cameras turn out to be very nice devices, and they are very suitable for 3D scanning. I haven't gotten around to using many of its features yet, but I think that the AI Enhanced Pure Video Mode, which offers great image in low light conditions, is definitely a feature I want to try. The Active HDR Shooting Mode is also a good feature when scanning different environments where you need to walk between shady and very bright places. But what I especially like about these cameras from the same brand is the voice control feature. Start recording. It's very simple and useful because voice commands starts recording on all three cameras at the same time. Stop recording. And you don't have to touch the cameras separately when the scanning stick is adjusted to its extreme position. I still need to practice a lot of different features and do more scans to see if this is the ultimate scanning device ever. So more videos on this topic are definitely coming. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you liked it press the like button and subscribe to my channel. I will continue to develop my scanning projects. Until the next time, thanks for watching.